Hello, good people of YouTube. My name is Donovan, and I'm here to teach you how to grade 8-bit log footage in DaVinci Resolve. So let's go ahead and get started. It's a pretty simple process, but I wanted to go over some do's and don'ts to make sure that you don't fall into some of the pitfalls that are inherent with color grading and correcting 8-bit colored footage. The reason why this is important is because uh, many new cameras are coming out with 10-bit footage, but lots of you don't have 10-bit footage cameras or 10-bit footage that you're working with. You're still working with 8-bit footage, and there's some challenges that come along with not having the flexibility of 10-bit color, so I'm going to go ahead and go into that. So I have here a clip. My wife and I went out to the park, and my son is sleeping in his uh, car seat. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. And it's a very simple grade, a very simple correction and grade. Nothing fancy, um, but that's kind of what I want to show you is the baseline and how to get it to look good um, without having to go through too much work. So I'm going to jump over to my color tab. And the first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to manage the, cl the color of these clips. And the reason I'm not having DaVinci Resolve do this for me automatically is because my primary camera is actually an A7S III. So my default color management settings are to grade uh, or to correct A7S III, S-Log3 footage. Um, that won't turn out too well inputting S-Log2 footage from an A6400. Color science is different, different sensor, and not to mention S-Log3 is significantly more flat than S-Log2. And that was just cause all sorts of problems over saturation, over contrast, banding. So we don't want that. So I have just bypassed my uh, color management and just made it so that the input color space on all of these clips, as you can see here, is just the same as timeline. So it just it's just ignoring my color management and just saying put it on the timeline basically as is. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is while I have all these clips selected, I'm going to right click and then go to input color space. And I'm going to select the color space of these clips. So I'm going to scroll down to S Gamut Sony S Log 2. Click on that, and immediately they all start to look much better, as you can see. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some minor adjustments. And I'm going to go ahead and start with this clip because it has skin tones in it. So, what I'm going to do is uh, there are just a few small things that I want to do uh, to this footage because. 8-bit uh, S-Log2 footage isn't perfect. It has some issues. And so um, I want to show you some of the things that I do to kind of make, uh, negate those issues. So first of all, it's still just a little too bright. Uh, and we don't want that. So uh, if I press play, you can see that all the noise and the shadows. And it was a really bright sunny day. It was like noonday, so it was the worst lighting condition. And so you can see here, this is all blown out here. But this shadow is... It's trying to pull detail from the shadow, from the, the, the data that was recorded in S-Log, but it's just kind of messy. So what I'm going to do is I am going to adjust my curves. I'm going to en enable editable splines here. And I'm going to bring that curve back down to more accurately reflect the shadow of the image. I'm going to select the upper end of the curve, and I'm also going to brighten it just a little bit so it's a little more contrast. Now, it doesn't look super great because the skin tones are oversaturated, but we're going to take care of that as well. I'm going to go here to my color warper, and I am going to grab the reds, and I'm going to desaturate them just a little bit like that. I even pulled them, yeah, just about there. You can see there, that already looks much much better and the noise and the different things that are in there it's it's not as visible anymore it looks more natural um but uh my highlights are still a little bit too bright for my liking so if i look at my scopes over here i like to keep my highlights between six uh 768 and 896 that's a personal preference there's no scientific reason or you know uh like colorist professional colorist reason for me doing that. That's just a personal preference. So I'm going to come over to my highlights and I'm going to bring them down so that they barely touch the top of the 896 area right there. And to my eye, I think that looks a little bit better. Um, okay, this is already looking 
really good, but my mids and kind of my upper shadows are maybe a little too dark. So I'll come to my gamma and just lift it slightly, just like that. And I think that's already looking much, much better. So let's go ahead and uh, grab a still. Basically, it's just your own personal LUT inside of Resolve. And we're going to go ahead now and see what it looks like when I uh, apply that to my other clips. So uh, whenever I apply a still to other clips, I always append the node graph rather than apply, mainly because apply will carry over um, things like stabilization or overwrite things like stabilization. So I don't want to apply it. I want to append it. I'm going to append it into that clip and see what it looks like there. And that looks pretty good. I like that. The blues are maybe a little too strong. So I think I'll desaturate the blues just a little bit. And they're actually more in the teal range. But I want to show that it's a very bright and sunny day. And I don't want it to be too teal. So I'll desaturate them and move them even over to the blues just to make it look more natural blue sky. Um, but it's, it's middle of the day, so very desaturated kind of blue sky. And that looks pretty good. The shadows look good. The roll off everything looks quite good in that short time lapse very good so now let's come to this clip now this clip i already know is going to be a bit tricky so we're going to append it and that does help but it was overexposed so what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to follow my rule of where to keep my highlights so i'm going to move my offset which is kind of the whole the whole clip i'm moving it down on my on on my uh brightness scale essentially i'm going to move it down until the highlights are kind of in that in, in the middle of these two these two values right here that's where i like to keep my highlights um and it's still it's still there's just something not quite right about it it's like too magenta in the shadows and it's still overexposed uh so what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to i think i'm going to move the the reds a little more into the yellows bring them down just like this and then I'm going to bring in some more shadows. So introduce some more shadows by increasing them because we want it to be pretty contrasty, right? See that it's overexposed. There we go. That doesn't actually look too bad. Uh, that already looks much, much better. Okay. Looking good. So then I have this clip right here where I'm kind of peering around a tree. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is apply or append that grade as well. And that immediately makes it look quite good. But you can see my highlights are still a little too hot, they're too strong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my highlights. I'm gonna move them down into this range here. I'm gonna put them halfway through. And again, I th it's, it's, it's not a perfect solution, but to me, to my eye personally, I think it makes it look uh, a little bit nicer. If you have overexposed areas, um, leaving it maxed out on you know how it's being um, laid out on your vector scope, um, or on your scope is usually not good in my opinion. Even if it's clipped, I think you should still kind of gray it out just a little bit and then, you know, make sure that the colors aren't too strong in the highlights uh, to distract from the main areas of the image. So, okay, you can see here that already looks much, much better. Okay, and then this clip, uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is. I think it turned out just fine. Same with this clip, I think it actually looks great. Um, if I hover over this, you can see that that's what it'll look like after. So maybe I'll append this one as well. Uh, but I'll actually reduce the temperature a bit because that was a bit too, bit too warm. So that looks good. I like that. Okay. And then we have this clip where I'm looking up into the trees and rotating my gimbal. So you can see here that it just rotates around, got that sun peeking through, and it already looks quite good. So. You can see here I can append this and that adds a little more contrast to it, makes it look more lifelike, which I think looks pretty good. Um, but I think I'm actually going to change a little bit of the sky. So I'm gonna to come to my color warper here and the sky is kind of teal the way that it kind of turned out. So I'm gonna move it over into the blues just a bit more like that. And to me, that makes it look a little more natural, it makes it look more lifelike. Um, I know the trend is to have real, you know, I make all your blues teal or whatever, but in this case, I don't think that's a good idea because uh, with leaves and everything, I want to create more color contrast, not just 
uh, lumen contrast. And so uh, by moving these teals over to the blue, that separates the sky from the leaves. And it's a great way to kind of color grade this, this clip and make it more visually interesting. Uh, and I think it just looks better anyway. So that clip looks good. And we have this clip here, which again was overexposed. So I'm gonna append this and we're going to uh, move the whole thing down like this. And there's a little too much kind of reddish reddishness to it, if that's even a word. So I'll select my uh, color warper on my second node here. By the way, when you append a node, it adds it to your node tree. Uh, so just be aware of that. If you have adjustments on this node, then your appended node is going to be separate adjustments. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to grab this and I think I'm going to move this a little more over to the yellow side. And I think that helped it uh, not look quite as unnatural. Looks good. Okay, now my last clip here where I, it's an image of my wife and then I pan down over to my son, his car seat there. So I think really the same treatment will probably just apply here. I'll just append this grade right here and that's already looking better. Um, but the reds are a little too strong and that tends to happen especially with sony cameras 8-bit recording an 8-bit log uh, the reds kind of turn out to be a bit too strong um, it can be a problem so what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to bring those reds down even more and to kind of move them over just slightly into the yellow just slightly like that and you can see there that maybe it's a little much bring a little bit of it back okay there we go you can see there that the reds right here in the ear were toned way down and look much better. Also, the hair looks significantly better and more natural, like a natural brown color rather than kind of that reddishness that was here earlier. Um, and then the shadows, of course, are treated appropriately. I'm not trying to peer into shadows and get all this noise that I don't need because it's a shadow, so it, it should be dark. So I've, I've uh, lined that up properly. And then my highlights are, are within reason here, but I can bring them down just a little bit if I want to. So maybe bring them down to about here uh, would be maybe a good range for me personally, just like that. And that already looks so much better than it did before. You can see here, hands down, slowly. See there, just like that. Very good. And that's really the majority of what I do to grade 8-bit footage. Now, you have to be very cautious with 8-bit footage, like I mentioned before, because it is very delicate. Uh, if you push it too hard, it will definitely show. And that's how it is with most footage. You want to be subtle, but 8-bit footage is especially fragile. If you push it too hard, it will break, and it'll, you'll get bent color banding and you know different things that just make it not look as good you'll get oversaturated you know reds or co different colors that are just pushed way too far so that'll uh, make things not work as well so thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial it's a simple one and i kind of just winged it uh, and trying to get back in the flow of uploading youtube videos so i would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to my channel i like making davinci resolve tutorials uh, specifically for creative professionals and um, some of the topics I like to cover are color grading, editing, and you know most other common things that you would use in DaVinci Resolve on a beginner level. So thanks again so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.